Welcome to the Sage 300 training video. Today's topic is Accounts Payable Payment Entry. For this training, we are working with the Sage provided sample company. To begin, let's take a look at the payment entry screen and its component parts. First, we navigate to Accounts Payable, AP Transactions, and Payment Entry. Upon opening the screen, we need to either create a new batch or use an existing one. To create a new batch, we click on the green plus icon. To select an existing unposted batch, we can use the finder. Select our batch and open it up. Let's review this batch. At the top of my window, I can see the batch number I'm working with, the date of the batch, and the bank being used. We can also see the number of entries in this batch and the total dollar amount. Moving into the entry header section, I can elect to enter an entry description if I would like. In this field right here, I can tell that this transaction is a payment. Similar to invoice entry, we have two date fields, a payment date and a posting date. The payment date will be the date shown on the check and the posting date will determine the fiscal year and period of the transaction. This then allows for the flexibility in the timing of transactions. In the sample company, the posting date is set to match the batch date. However, this can be controlled in the options. Our next field is the vendor to pay. If there is a separate remit to address, it will be selected here. If it is set as primary, it will default in, or we can elect to optionally select it. If there is a remit to address, set up as primary on the vendor, it would automatically be entered. However, we can either utilize that, select a different one, or use none at all. The next field here is the name that will be printed on the check. It will either default to the name of the business entered in the vendor number, or if there is a remit to, it will default to the remit to name found on the remit to information. The remit to information can also be manually edited on a case-by-case -case basis if needed. The next field we encounter is the account set window. This field will be set according to the vendor code with the default entry set up in the vendor maintenance screen. However, if needed, this field can be manually updated. The payment code field allows us to select from different payment types that have been defined in the, your company setup. It defaults to the one set up in the vendor master record. One of the primary functions of the payment code is to control if a physical check needs to be printed or if the check printing can be skipped, as would be the case if the payment to be made is in electronic format. The print check button defines if a check needs to be printed or not. If it is unchecked, we can now enter a check number. This is useful when a manual check is written and needs to be documented. There is a reference field here if you would like to enter additional reference information about this transaction. The detail grid below identifies the document or documents selected to be paid, what their current balance is, how much we are paying, and if any discounts are being taken. The payment amount is the sum of all the applied amounts for multiple documents if there are multiple documents being entered on the payment. Now let's create a transaction by clicking on the new batch icon. We'll give it a description. We'll accept the date. And in the bank field, let's select a different bank. Let's select CTAC as our bank. For this example, let's go ahead and select Fred's Cleaning Service. And we can see that we are set to use or their remit to address in Las Vegas. We'll go ahead and explore the payment code field here just to, for a moment. It defaulted to check, but let's take a look at the wire transfer. We can see that we have a number of different options here, but if we select the wire transfer, Notice that we get another account. This actually allows us to offset the payment to a different general ledger account 
other than the one entered in the bank entry up here. However, we don't recommend that you do that because this also causes problems with the bank reconciliation module later on. So we recommend that you do not use this particular other account field. If you are using a payment code that has a type of other, just go ahead and leave this blank. But let's come back and select our check USD that we were working with. We can see at the moment that our payment amount is zero. Let's enlarge our screen here just a little bit. Now, notice I don't have anything in my grid. What I can do is come here and select my refresh button and get a list of everything. If I want, I can select my document type and say invoices, and now I only get invoices. Or if I select credit notes, I might only see the credit notes. But let's use all. I can also so do change the order based on my document number, my due date, my document date. Let's go ahead and just use document date. And if I wanted to, I could filter or select where I want to start my transactions from, but I want to see all of them today. And I can see now that my credit note is in the first position because if I scroll all the way over here, I can see that my document date and my due dates are now sorted in order. And so we want the first two transactions. because those are the ones, if we look over here, that are due in the near future are, because today is the 24th, this is due on the 30th, we'd like to get it there by the 30th. And we're gonna say yes to our credit note because we wanna take the full amount of the credit note and I'll double click in the apply column here to select my invoice. Now, if I want, I can also use my arrow key and the space bar to navigate through my lines and select them or unselect them. Now, looking at this a little bit more closely, I can see that my payment amount is currently $619.65, which is the sum of, of the two values entered here. So we're paying the entire amount of the invoice and we are taking the full amount of the credit memo. I can see that I have a discount available of $17.87, but I'm not taking any of that. That's because Sage has calculated that my discount date, let's just expand that here so you can see the full field, is a, uh, in the past. And so by default, it is not taking any of that discount because I have missed that date. If I wanted to manually take the discount, what I first have to do is subtract $17.87 from my applied amount. The easy thing to do is when I've got the field highlighted, hit the plus key and that will activate my calculator. And then I could hit the subtract button, 17.87, enter, it recalculates. I can hit P or Alt P for paste or the paste button here, and that will paste my dollar amount in. And then 7, 17. 87, and that's reduced my total payment amount. But notice that my net balance here is still zero. If I come in and take, I'm just gonna copy this and hit the zero for a moment. Notice that my net balance right at the moment is 1787 when I take that discount out, and when I put it back in, it returns to zero. So it's constantly tracking what our a net balance is for that particular transaction. And when I'm done, I can hit add and it takes me to the next payment. I'm gonna select one more vendor here. I'm gonna refresh. I'm gonna pay my $5,000 rent and I'm gonna add. And so now I have two transactions in this batch. I have a total check run of $5,601.78. And when I'm done, I'm gonna close. Let's go ahead and print our checks for payment. We'll go into payment batch list. And we can see that we have our two batches that we are work been looking at and working on. Let's go ahead and select our demo batch. 
Now, by the way, if we want to, we can double click on it and open up our batch and go back in and edit it should we need to, which we can also do by hitting the open button. But we want to print our checks. So if we hit the print post button, now this print button, by the way, will actually print a report of what is on the batch and won't actually print the checks. So if you needed some kind of report for internal approval, this might be a good option for you. So let's go print and post our checks by hitting the print post button. Again, we'll make sure our line is highlighted, hit the print post button, and up comes the print check screen. It knows our check stock code that we like to use for this particular bank. It keeps track of the next check number and keeps track of the template code. There can actually be multiple check stocks entered for a particular bank, uh, depending on the nature of the checks that you are writing. We can see down here that we've got two checks who the payees are, what's the dollar amount of them. And if we hit the print button down here, it generates two pages for our two checks, one page for each check, and it is ready to print on pre-printed check stock. There are options if you want to use a blank generic check stock and have the MICR printed as part of the printing process um, through a utility called Print Boss or other similar utilities. But for today's training, we're just going to focus on a standard template using pre printed check stock. So at this point, you would go make sure your check stock is, entered, is put in your printer properly. And when you're done, you can hit the print button. When your check stock comes out of the printer fine, go ahead and close your screen and you'll be asked this message, were all the checks printed successfully? If they were, you could go ahead and say yes. But if say the check, the printer mangled something or you ran out of toner or they were printed wrong, you can say no. And then you can come in and say, which check or checks were not printed properly? I can select a check individually, or I can select a reprint range and say what range of checks were not printed. And I can give a starting number and an ending number and change their status to not printed. So if you didn't put enough check stock in or you had a larger malfunction, you could switch a whole bunch at once. So we'll just switch this last one here. Then if I want, I can hit the reprint button. It will assign the next check number, 57, and I can hit print and go along my merry way. And I can say, yes, all my checks were printed successfully. And it will say, do you want to post our batch? Let's go ahead and post our batch. And our printing process is complete. If you have a batch that is electronic transactions, you wouldn't have to print out a check stock form. It would just automatically post the batch when you hit the print post button. This concludes our training video. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. For more information, please visit us at equationtech.us. Goodbye for now and have a great day.